Hello and welcome to your Grow Groups this week. My name is Jessica Sachs. I'm the director of Grow Groups, and we are so glad to continue this conversation with you on Curious Jesus. We're looking at asking more questions in our lives, asking better questions in our lives, and overall seeing what does it look like to be a little bit more like Jesus, a little bit more curious about the world around us. This week, I'm joined by Pastor Evie. Hello. How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you doing? Good. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you're here with us in the groups. And this has been this has been a fun series. We've been asking some it big has. questions. Yeah. There are, Jesus asks a lot of big questions. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the best part about asking big questions is not having to answer them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. So um, this week we will be talking about, and the story comes up, a moment of language misunderstanding. And so you've talked about this, or it's been talked about in the sermon, and we'll get to it more here. But I'm curious, do we have any common questions or phrases in English that can be easily misunderstood? <laughs> I mean, just like our, hey, how's it going? How, how's it going? How's what going? Or, yeah, where is it like, going? Or, yeah. what, or what's up, right? Right, and um, we get mad at like middle schoolers and they're like, the sky, but like, right. that's yeah. the answer. I think listening to kids too is like, they have all kinds of phrases. You're like, what does that mean? As, a, as their parent, I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying. But I do, I think, um, I can think of an interesting example. I think these come to light often in cross-cultural situations where you have actual language barriers or using different languages. I have, <laughs> I was in a meeting one time with my um, colleagues in Mozambique. We were in Mozambique, but we had an American um, facilitator and she kept talking about, we were doing brainstorming, which that word in and of itself, what yes. does that mean, brainstorm, um, when you try to translate that? But she kept saying, okay, let's put that idea over here in the parking lot which, you know, we kind of get, okay, yeah, you're going to park the idea. But my my colleagues in Mozambique, which is not a car-centric country, do not own cars. So so to try to, to translate the parking lot of ideas to the park, it was, yeah. So we can really get into some sticky situations with literal and figurative meanings cross-culturally. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. I feel like, especially when you hear it from other languages, yes. and then, yeah, when other people hear us, you're like, oh, that that didn't make didn't sense. Didn't translate. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did not translate. I love that. So this week we're talking about this story where Jesus gives a caution to the disciples. He's saying, don't trust the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeast. And the disciples in their full state of hunger are like, Jesus is mad we didn't bring bread. <laughs> they, because they Jesus forgot the hungry. bread. He's hungry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I wonder what a hungry Jesus was like. I know. Does he get hangry? Hangry? I, I, have so, I have so many questions. Questions. <laughs> questions for Jesus in heaven. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. So, you know, he says this, the disciples are, think Jesus is mad there's no bread. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying, no, I mean, don't trust the the words and the work mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. and if we look back culturally, yeast meant this kind of like evil-ish agent because mm -hmm. it just goes in and secretly rises. It's pervasive. pervasive. Yes. It sort of takes over. Yeah. 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 Which okay. explains why I've always felt weird about yeast. It's this weird living organism. I don't, it freaks <laughs> no me out. No one understands it. <laughs> <laughs> it is evil. <laughs> and so the disciples just did not ask any clarifying questions. So what keeps you from asking follow-up or clarifying questions in a moment of potential misunderstanding? Gosh, this happens a lot. If you, you're talking with, you're in conversation with someone, and and they ask you a question, and you're like, I want to, um, I want them to think that I understand. I don't want to appear unintelligent. <laughs> they obviously think I know what they're talking about. I don't want to look foolish. Those are sort of the things that keep me from from following up. Um, and I, and usually I'm very aware when it's happening. <laughs> I'm like. I don't fully understand, but I'm going to pretend like I do, <laughs> just to save face. <laughs> That's probably my biggest hurdle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're alone in that. <laughs> That's so true. I feel like I've heard a lot of people recently saying that kind of thing to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be better about clarifying questions. Mm -hmm. I have been in this, like, weird mental fog for a few months, and I find that I ask the clarifying questions because I'm – because I know I misunderstood. Mm -hmm. But there are times when I think the disciples were truly caught in this moment. I don't think mm -hmm. they knew they were wrong. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they just assumed they knew the answer. Mm -hmm. 
That's also true. We we sometimes just gloss over if we like, oh yeah, I, I know what they're talking about and I, I know what to do in this situation or I know how to answer, but we've really missed, we've sort of crossed wires, missed the point altogether. Yeah. We get just so caught up in a state of like hunger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, this sure is clearly you. what this means. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's get bread. <laughs> Not Jesus what Jesus meant. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So kind of a kind of a deeper question. What produces yeast in your life? I think there are lots of lots of things that can very quickly take over our our um, trains of thought, our sense of self, our our time. Um, some of those things, I, I think a lot about like narrative, like internal narrative, um, the stories that we run that we tell ourselves. Um, sometimes those are really good, but I think for the most part, for most humans, we have um, we default to sort of a negative self narrative. So, um, and that can become really pervasive. If, if we feel like we didn't do one thing well, um, we start telling ourselves that story and that can begin to affect how we do other things or how we th think about other things or how we interact with people. Um, so the, the inner, what do you call that? The inner critic can be a, a yeasty thing, <laughs> perhaps. Um, I think about time, um, the things that suck up our time and we go down rabbit holes, like a rabbit hole is kind of like yeast, right? So um, the internet. All of, all of the things, <laughs> social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like you just, you click on one thing and then it goes to another and it goes to another and it just sort of, um, before you know it, two hours are gone, you know. They just disappear. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love that you used a rabbit hole. I was like, that is, don't oh, actually no. go down that, a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also double meaning there, literal, metaphorical. Yeah. <laughs> That was perfect. What do you mean? Yeah, I think that's that's so true. Those things that we unconsciously let like seep into mm -hmm. our lives. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, there. Are, I, I feel like I've crafted my Facebook in a way that it's got a more positive. I've taken out some of the toxicity, mm -hmm. but I know it still gets in there. Mm -hmm. And I and my guard's not up for that all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So as we are, are trying to remember this faith. That, that was Jesus' question. Do you not perceive? Do you not remember? What practices are built into our tradition to help us remember? All of our... Um, our faith and our, our religious life together, like what it means to be church is all built around remembrance. And I don't know that we specifically name that frequently enough. Um, I mean, everything in in a worship setting, in a church setting, the reason space and location is important to us um, is because it's marked with images that help us to remember, right? We have, uh, we have the cross, we have candles, we have the Bible, we have um, stained glass, images that help take us back to a story or a place. Um, so we have lots of really physical things in our faith traditions that help us remember. Um, obviously, I mean, the one that comes to mind that has to do with bread, <laughs> so great tie-in, um, would be communion. We, we use those very words at communion, in our sacrament, um, Jesus says the words. It's the other place where he says, do you, um, not, do you not remember, but he says, remember. Every time you do this, when you do this action of breaking bread and sharing the cup, remember me. Um, so that, that tradition, that ritual, our other rituals of baptism, um, foot washing, we do that periodically throughout the year. So some of these things that we enact are just designed for us to recall, to recall who God is, what God has done for us, how God has been faithful. Um, even our very acts of worship, our songs take us back, um, our prayers take us back. Every every Sunday in worship, I like to, when I teach about this in um, seminary classes, I like to say every Sunday is a recalling of the whole story from creation to final resurrection. Like somewhere, somewhere in church on Sunday, you're gonna hear pieces of that story all the way from the beginning to the to our final hope of the very end. So it's sort of that um, that holistic remembering is that that's the story we retell every Sunday if we're doing it right. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, that explains, you know, why ritual is so important. Mm -hmm. It helps us remember. That's why it's important to to be a part of a small group like a community. Important to be 
part of a worshiping community and, mm-hmm. and surrounding, our, surrounding ourselves with the good yeast, the good substances. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole loaf of bread. The whole <laughs> loaf with some butter on it. <laughs> That's right. Well, now, now I am hungry. Yeah. I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a sandwich now. Well, thank you for being here with us this week. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us. We are praying over your groups as you continue to ask more and better questions. And hey, while you're out there this week, stay curious. 